metastatic disease, by far the most common thing. We'll see how much time do we have? Jonathan Rizzoli, 15 minutes? Is that I think right? so, yeah. We're 12, oh, 12, 15, my time here. Okay. So, sagittal CAT scan, axial CAT scan. This was a body image, actually. This wasn't one for me. Um, it was an abdomen scan. You can see in the spine, look how much whiter this is, and this, and this. Sclerotic metastases in a patient with prostate cancer. So there are multiple here in uh, four, three, up here in the T-spine. So these are the different modalities that you're gonna see and you might order as medical students when you're evaluating patients with meds. This first thing is a bone scan and uh, people still get bone scans. Maybe they usually look better than this, um, but there's a little bit of uptake of radio tracer in the biggest uh, met, which was here in L4. We do these front and back and they get an initial image and then they get a little bit of a delayed image with more radio tracer uptake. This is a fast, cheap, easy way to see how widespread the metastatic disease is because you can see, you see the whole body. I can see if they have a met in their arm, I can see if they have a met in their skull, in their foot, whatever. So not the best um, anatomic imaging, but great for picking up certain kinds of mets of the whole body, like I said, very fast. And then you can get more advanced imaging later. Now this is a PET scan. So on the right, this is the typical PET scan you would see with the color, but this is the black and white version. And it looks like I made this picture because it looks almost exactly like a bone scan, except see how well you can see every metastasis here. It's like a bone scan better. But PET, of course, is a lot more expensive and it's a lot harder to get. These days, I mean, it's not terribly hard in an academic center, but it's not the fast, cheap, 10 cent exam like the bone scan is. But if you can get this, that's great. And then of course we like them colorized and the tumor shows up a different color. So FDG, AVID, metastases here. I, I just show you one slice, but they're multiple and they're yellow because they're hot. They've got a lot of FDG avidity with that prostate cancer. Um, all right, so these are the typical MR findings of a metastasis. This picture, this, so I told you the different ways that a cancer patient can present. This one came into the ER. So again, county hospital, no medical care. So they came in, no history. They didn't want to tell us anything. You know, some people come in and they don't want to tell you, they don't really trust the medical system, but they have to come in because they're in terrible pain or they've got deficits. That's what this lady said. I have back pain. She wouldn't tell us anything else. But it doesn't matter because in this case, we already know what this is going to be. There's only one possible thing that could have this MR appearance and that's metastatic disease. So that's sagittal T1. Normal bone marrow is white because it's got fat in it. This one is not white, this one's dark because it's completely infiltrated with tumor. It's also got a pathologic fracture and it's um, compressed, posterior cortex bowing out into the canal, compressing the fecal sac and the cauda equina. Down here, there's another little one here in uh, L3 and one in L4. Sagittal T2 shows the cerebrospinal fluid, can show you how much better than the T1, how much fecal sac narrowing there is. So you can see again, this is a little bit off uh, from this one, but retropulsion of the posterior cortex into the canal, compressing the conus. This one, I told you there's a different kind of T2. This one is a fat saturated T2, takes out all this whiteness from the vertebral marrow. So it's only highlighting edema, tumor, or infection. So all this bright in this vertebral body is edema and tumor and it shows these two as well. Sagittal post contrast and again fat saturated they don't do that where Dr. Rizzoli is but they do it where I am because it makes it easier for simple radiologists like me. Highlights all the areas of tumor so it's, amazingly this I thought this whole body would be enhancing it's not only the posterior as well as the epidural enhancement so epidural extension of disease here at L1 and then enhancing METs at L3 and L4. And here are axial images at the level of greatest compression. This is the T2 showing the fecal sac. Everything here is um, cerebral spinal fluid, not much left because it's being compressed. And here's our post-contrast fat set. This looks almost exactly like our infection case from our other lecture, doesn't it? It looks just like that from our first case. So it's got enhancement around the vertebral body, enhancement in the epidural space. But in this case, it's not infection. It's actually tumor with epidural extension of disease compressing the cord. So uh, we're never going to get through all this, um, but maybe, was, uh, Jonathan, do you want to talk a little bit about the treatment or do you want me to kind of go through these slides? 
how would you best like to approach um, this in, in an, a so, half hour talk in uh, 10 minutes here? <laughs> There's a lot of, it's very nuanced. So um, it, it really is, there are a lot of different um, protocols that exist um, in terms of uh, what treatment should be done, whether it's more, um, you know, chemo radiation uh, versus maximal surgery versus in some instances, hospice pal care. And the things to keep in mind are the patient's Karnofsky performance score. Those are very, very important things. Patient preferences, you know, how aggressive are you going to be with a patient who say is 85 years old with widespread metastatic disease, numerous medical comorbidities, and, you know, versus someone who's like 30 something years old, um, who's healthy and has, um, you know, um, a, a, say some metastatic tumor in their spine. There are a lot of different things that, that go along in this. Or it's not a um, it's not a cookbook type of decision making. Um, the two papers I would recommend for the med medical students to read, which definitely helps uh, break things down and help guide your decision making, are looking at the uh, NOMS or N O M S um, criteria. And I'll, I'll post a little link to that in the um, chat box. And the SINS score or this uh, uh, spinal instability and, and neoplasm score. So it, it kind of helps. Uh, guide your decision making in, in certain ways uh, to make things a little bit more simpler because this is this generally tends to be very very complicated there's so many different branch points and um, uh, forks in the road when it comes to, to the decision making tree but um, for the medical students at least those are the two things you guys should know noms and sins and I'll, I'll post links to that on the uh, I'll on show the, you a picture if we get to it in the next 10 minutes <laughs> we'll, we'll show pictures of that too so thanks that was good so um the treatment of metastatic disease has really changed recently. And, and those of you in medical students, that are medical students and even residents now, this is going to be what you think is, is always been. It's going to be the standard of treatment. But I think for those who are practicing spine surgeons who've been around a little bit, and I see uh, our other, our other uh, hosts have joined us here, this for them is maybe somewhat new. Maybe when they started practicing, this wasn't the way things were done. And um, it's still... I think maybe being adopted, but like uh, Dr. Rizzoli just said, the gnomes and the um, SIN score help us evaluate these cases. But um, stereotactic radio surgery and SBRT are relatively new, as well as new surgical techniques, which help us treat tumors, which were no, which are metastatic disease, tumors, which are metastatic, which previously were not amenable to treatment. So it was kind of a death sentence before. Now it's kind of, in some rare cases, meds can be almost a chronic uh, disease to be managed, and some of those patients can live quite a long time, and so so many considerations are different now. Um, so these are the, this is a renal cell carcinoma. I just like this dramatic picture. Here you can see an axial CAT scan, huge renal cell. This, I'm amazed that this guy let it get this bad, but you know, in some places, again, people don't want to come in for medical treatment until things get very bad. Um, this is a different med, uh, metastasis from renal cell, the sagittal post contrast. And then this is the surgical result. So you have a number of different treatment options, surgery, radiation, chemothera chemotherapy, immunotherapy, hormonal therapy. Um, I might even be leaving something out there. I'm not sure. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.